Hey guys, welcome back. We have read the topic of elements, compounds, and mixtures. Now we know this thing that how we can separate between compound and a mixture. What is the composition of a compound? What are the different types of the compound? And how we can differentiate between a compound and a mixture. So this is the concept which of uh, of which we are done now, and uh, we have studied different aspects about the general structure of a metal, about the structure of an alloy, why alloy is preferred over a pure metal. So all these concepts are done in the previous topics, and along with that, I have taught you why a symbol is so important and how it is giving us certain information. how we can tell about the different uh, in in different things from that symbol for example what will be the atomic number mass number nuclear number etc etc so all these informations are already finished and now we are going to move towards the parts of the atom so there are basically different parts of the atoms i am telling it to you right now this is atom first of all and it is divided into two parts okay it is divided into two parts what are those two parts number 1 is the nucleus nucleus and the number 2 is the electronic shells all right okay so nucleus is the central part this part is containing specific number of particles and those particles are protons and neutrons whereas electronic shells these are the what these are the pathways around the nucleus and in these pathways there is only one type of particles which are called as electrons so this is how we are dividing the atom into two major parts nucleus and the electronic shells okay now on the next page i am just telling you the division of the particles of an atom so which are called as the sub atomic particles as well guys before telling you this thing i would like to inform you that for both igcses and gc students this is an important topic examiner is sometime drawing the sketch of this table and he is asking to fill up this okay so i am telling you so number of name of particle here name of particle name plus symbol of particle so what is this subatomic particles subatomic particles here is this okay i should okay this is um uh, name and symbol of a particle so here there will be a charge on that particle and the mass of that particle okay you may write it very clearly here okay so this is the one and this is the second and this is the third okay so guys there it will be symbol is name is proton where a symbol is p plus name is electron symbol is e minus name is neutron and symbol is n0 so what is the charge on proton it will be plus 1 on electron it is minus 1 on neutron it is 0 mass of proton is 1 mass of electron is 1 over 1840 or it is also considered as 1 over 1836 sometimes it is written as 1800 as well 1 or 1 over 1800 as well so it means that we can say that mass of electron is 1800 times or 1840 times or 1836 times smaller as compared to the mass of proton and neutron so this is sufficient information to inform you that mass of a pro electron is much 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 lesser as compared to the mass of uh, proton or mass of neutron okay
So here, what is the neutron mass? It is considered as one as well. Can we say that mass of proton and neutron is equal to each other? Yes, mass of proton and neutron is equal to each other. And what about the charges? Mass uh, is uh, equal for proton and neutron, whereas charge is equal for proton and electron. And uh, in case of neutron, it has no role in the charge of an atom, okay? As it is charge-free, as it is neutral, all right. Let me go to another page. I'm telling you another information. So for example, we are saying that in this case, particles are coming from this side. What particles are coming from this side? Rays of particles, I mean to say, electron, proton, neutron are coming from this side and they are passed through, they are passed through what? They are passed through this magnetic pathway and this is a pathway, okay. We know this thing that one side is positively charged, whereas the other is negative. Okay, so I am mentioning this as this, and I am mentioning this as this. Okay, so what uh, scientists have observed in this case that uh, one of the particles is moving like this, whereas the other particle is moving like this. And some of the particles are traveling like this. Okay. So they are just telling you that they are not neither moving towards positive nor towards negative. Okay. Now the one which is moving towards positive is electron. Whereas the one which is moving towards negative is proton. Whereas the one which is not, not deviating towards any side, it is neutron. How it is. Okay. Guys, can you look at the difference between the two? that uh, the electron has been deviated more, much more as compared to the proton. And why it is so? That as the mass of electron is much, much smaller as compared to the mass of proton, that's why much more deviation is observed in case of electron. This is the reason that it has given a great deviation and the reason is the very small mass. And what about the neutron? It is not affected by any of the charge. And why it is so? Because itself is charge free so it is not moving towards any plane so this is a very important question and uh, examiner has asked this question in some of the papers and you people can see that questions in the past papers as well i will show you such type of questions as well so this is the basic information of the symbol of the element and the subatomic particles and how uh, the deviation can be observed or this is an evidence that mass of proton is greater as compared to the mass of electron this uh, this experiment is one of the one of the proof which is telling you that mass of electron is much, much lesser as compared to the mass of uh, proton and as compared to the mass of neutron. All right. And this, this is one of the proof as well that it is uh, telling you that neutrons are charge free because they are not attracting towards either of the plate. Okay. So now I'm going to change the board and I'm telling you one next concept and that is related to electronic configuration. Okay. Before electronic configuration, I would like to inform you to how to calculate the neutron number. Okay, so there is one formula I'm writing here. What is that formula? I'm trying to consume this place as well. And that is neutron number. How to calculate neutron number? Neutron number. Is this a formula? You may consider it as a formula. Otherwise, it's nothing. Neutron number is equal to nucleon number nucleon number minus proton number will it be implementable applicable on all the atoms yes this is the formula which you people should keep in your mind why i am saying proton number why i am not saying electron number there is uh, something behind that and i am telling you right now is this that in case of uh, proton number basically proton number is never changing so please carefully keep this thing in your mind that periodic table is a symbolic representation of elements and periodic table is arranged in the increasing order of proton number so proton number is not changing if you are going to change the proton number it means that we are going to change the element as well so please take care of this that uh, periodic table is arranged in the increasing order of proton number and it is the basic concept related to any element. It means basic identity of any element. Okay. So here um, it is, for example, symbol. First of all, symbol of element. 
and we are practicing proton number. You may write atomic mass or we can say it nucleon number. Whereas here it is neutron number. Guys, this is also called as electron number as well. Or it is called as atomic number as well. In this case, nucleon number is also called as atomic mass or mass number. So all these discussions are already done between us. And you can see I'm going to write down a few examples here so that you people may have a better idea how to calculate this. Okay, how to calculate this. All right, this is how it is. Okay, now, for example, I am writing a few examples Let's consider five or six examples. Okay. All right. So this is hydrogen, the first one. It is written like this. And then it is helium, the second one. Third one is lithium. Fourth one is beryllium. Fifth one is boron. Sixth one is carbon. Okay. Let's count the number of protons. In this case, number of protons are 1. In this case, number of protons are 2. Here it is 3, 4, 5, 6. What is the nucleon number here? 1, 4, 7, 9, 11, 12. Okay. So, how to calculate the neutron number? 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. Hmm. There is zero, like zero neutrons in case of hydrogen. Yes, there is zero neutrons in case of hydrogen. So please be careful about this and how to calculate. I am doing that work as well so that you people may have a very clear idea. So it's four minus two is equal to two and seven minus three is equal to four. So this uh, lithium is an evidence that there is a possibility that proton number is not matching with neutron number. Yes, you can see this thing. Okay, but in this case, it will be nine minus four is equal to 5 again another possibility of that 11 minus 5 is equal to 6 but in this case electron number proton number and neutron number is similar in case of carbon okay so these are few examples which are telling you that this is the way to calculate the proton number electron number neutron number nucleon number from the symbol of the element given in the periodic table one very important key information which i have just told it to you that periodic table is arranged in the increasing order of proton number. So proton number is the basic identity of the element. When we are going to change the proton number, it is changing the element as well. Okay. So this is how we are going to sum up this information. Now I am taking you to the idea of electronic configuration, which I have just mentioned before. So this is electronic configuration, electronic configuration. Now before moving ahead, I would like to inform you that electronic configuration is also called as electronic distribution. Electronic distribution. Okay. So this is K and this is L and this is M and this is N. Okay. What are these and how the things are happening? Okay. Uh, here it is 2. Here it is 8. Here it is. I will explain everything to you. 18. Okay. And here it is. 8. 18. And 32. All right. So this is how it is. This is. I'm trying to make this a sketch first and then I will explain it to you. People. Okay. All right. These arrows should be in your mind very clearly. So that's why I'm trying to make them a little bit more brighter
All right. All right. Look at here right now. Okay. So what is KLMN? First of all, KLMN are the electronic shells in which electrons are distributed. So basically, K shell has a specific capacity, which is of two. So two electrons will be placed in K shell. After placing two electrons in the K shell, we will move to L shell, in which we are going to keep eight electrons. After L shell, we will move to M shell, in which we are going to keep eight electrons. And then after keeping eight electrons in M, we will move to N, where we will keep eight electrons. Guys, I have just given you a basic idea, a basic idea idea about electronic configuration in the next lecture i'm going to explain this whole story again from the same board okay so uh, this is just what is electronic configuration it is just the distribution of electrons in the specific electronic shells in the pathways around the nucleus i am going to discuss the topic of electronic configuration right from the scratch in the next lecture thank you very much take care of yourself see you in the next class all the best